active shooters are incidents that are spontaneous. In other words, that we don't usually have a lot of pre-warning they're going to occur. Dispatch, I've got uh, one female here says there's a male inside shooting people. We are going into a code red situation, so that means a full lockdown. The average shooting time in a school shooting is under eight minutes, which provides uh, police little opportunity to intervene. Besides the family home, the school should be the safest environment for children. Let's do this! Bottom line is, the children said the school are our responsibility when something like this happens. It's a typical spring morning in southern British Columbia. Students race to get to school on time. Everyone has different issues to deal with. Parents, peer pressure, grades, and for some, being bullied. No one thinks that the morning could end in bloodshed. At a school across town, another scene unfolds. Today, Mounties train how to quickly confront an irrational gunman. It's an abandoned school with volunteers inside. Simon, what are you doing back there? You're not going to... No, there's been a shooting at McDonald Secondary School. Alpha 13 on scene. The first Mountie on the scene gets as much information as possible. What's going on? The principal's been shot. For an officer, the unknown can be deadly. We've got uh, one female here says there's a male inside shooting people. One victim so far. The goal is for police to follow the sound of the gun and to get there before it's too late. We've got more police officers on the way. You hear the sirens, right? Yes. OK, just stay calm, OK? Get away from the school. 13, we got uh, guys coming out of this, kids coming out of the school running. Box behind you. Hey, you're on point. We got a rear guard yet? Rear guard, yeah. Rear guard, sir. A school shooting happens fast, usually in under eight minutes. Got it. 13, uh, we've got the four person contact team entering. I got door! Door's open! I got this one! Moving! It's a race against time. Adrenaline is high. It's a new way of doing business for frontline officers. Open door right. We've got victim down in the hallway. The old way costs too many lives. At Coquitlam City Hall, frontline police officers are getting a history lesson in school shootings. And what we are talking about is people that go to target rich environments. So whether it's that they go to the job site, they go to the school or they go to the shopping mall, they're picking locations where they're gonna find a high likelihood of potential victims to engage so that they can rack up, quite frankly, a body count. It's specialized training, and now Mounties across the country are taking it. Corporal Greg Gillis is an expert on the use of force for the RCMP. Traditionally, what police officers would have done for this, like, so the patrol officers would have been to arrive at the scene, set up a safety perimeter around the outside of the building, and then as people that ran out of the building, they would help those people, but then wait for a specialty team, like an emergency response team or a SWAT team. Attention, South Unit, possible shots fired at Columbine High School, 6201 South Pierce. Even though police arrive within five minutes of shots fired, they had to wait for backup. The gunmen kill freely for over 20 minutes. We've got 13 kids that died in that school that day. A couple of teachers in amongst that. Dozens of people wounded. And we've got a police department that's being criticized for what? For a traditional response, because they didn't go in. Lessons were learned. Finding that balance between 
collecting resources outside, quickly formulating a plan, but getting inside the building and saving lives. It changed the way society looks at bullying, school safety, gun violence, and it changed frontline policing forever. If Columbine had happened in Canada, police might have reacted the same way, but not anymore. Across Canada, general duty police officers are learning special tactics. Okay, so again. How to stop an active shooter as fast as possible, and without the help of the emergency response team. What I don't want happening is I come out and uh, he's already going to be stressed to the max and hyped on adrenaline, but uh, as I step out, you no know, splat, uh, he addresses whatever's coming out the room. So it's paramount that he understands that it's a friendly coming out, not a bad guy. Let's go back again, guys. What we want to do is, in this case... It's called Immediate Action Rapid Deployment, or IARD. Can you hear sound? It's designed to save time and lives. The key difference now is, is what we're saying to frontline officers is, come to the scene, do a risk assessment, but if you think that the incident is ongoing and there's people being seriously hurt or killed inside, then there's a need for us to rapidly deploy police resources into that building, so for policemen to go inside. And so as a result, that's what we're training them to do. And that's exactly how police responded to a shooting at Dawson College. The first officers to the scene took only four minutes to stop the gunman. He killed one and wounded 19 others. If the police had delayed, it could have been much worse. So now, they act fast and follow the sound of the gun. It's extremely dangerous. A suicidal gunman has lost all respect for human life. Snake where it goes, okay? And now all, all we're gonna do is just... When they get to the room where the bullets are coming from, they go in. Your room entry is fastest smooth, smoothest fast, because <laughs> you forgot to dig your corner there. And then all of a sudden, you know, the light bulb comes up, and you're like, oh yeah. Just go back there and do it again. Okay. Entering a room or doing a room entry is the most dangerous because the person inside has the advantage. We don't know what's, what he or she has inside. If he's got a hostage, weapons, the number of people, what the environment is in like inside. And um, the only thing we've got is speed, surprise, and action. For the next part, the instructors create realistic scenarios. The guns are loaded, but with paint bullets. It forces them to think on their feet. So in this case, the call is going to consist of them responding to a report of an employee coming back to a work site, looking for the boss, the owner of the company, that sort of thing, and who's come into the building armed with a handgun. Scenario on! Greg's role is to distract the teams as they look for the gunman. The trainees have to quickly decide what to do with him. The teams do well, but there's always room for improvement. Like any course, there's some mistakes that are being made, but that's what we want to see. We're not seeking perfection. We're seeking people to take tactics that they're being introduced to, apply them to situations that they haven't been in before, make a few minor mistakes so that we can, as part of the training process, point those out, give them some different options. When the stakes are this high, you have to move fast. Every second can mean another life. Being a parent, if that was my child, um, I'd be going into the school regardless of the circumstances. And um, having been a school liaison officer, we need to treat these children like they're our own. Right now, uh, we can't get through to our command post. 
We need to have an off-site location for the media. Has anyone gotten to pull a plan at the school there? In the case studies, studies such as Columbine, Tabor, and, and, and all the other ones as well, pertinent information was missing to the responders. Kickwit and Fire Rescue. A school shooting requires a lot of resources. It quickly becomes a busy scene. Everyone needs to know where to go, or it's chaos. The RCMP are determined it won't happen again. They begin to build a huge database. SAFE is born. Tony Massey is the national coordinator for the SAFE plan. SAFE is School Action for Emergency Plan. It's a site-specific emergency response plan for law enforcement. All it is is emergency planning, instantly available to the police officers, so they don't have to waste any time whatsoever in starting to make those calls. Okay, where am I going to land a helicopter to bring in resources or to take out injured? Where am I going to set up the police cars? Let me think about that for a few minutes. We don't have those minutes. We need every second counts in these types of responses, and having that information available to us is essential. It involves getting to know 6,000 schools across Canada, intimately. It's a lot of intelligence to gather. So floor plans, aerial shots, tactical considerations. Another thing that we're going to want to note is uh, this upper overhang balcony here. Um, if members are responding to this room, they want to know that uh, there could be potentially be someone up there. Anything that could possibly save time and lives during an emergency. So what we're looking for in the cafeteria is uh, to get kind of photos from, from each corner. Just to... Simon Baldwin is a civilian working with the RCMP. He teaches police officers how to collect data for the plan. Well, you're looking for the, the main areas in the school, the common areas, so your library, gym, cafeteria, where these incidents typically happen. You're also looking for some of the key points, like the, the fire alarm shut off, uh, electrical panels. We want to have the contact information for the school. What I need you to do is refer to your uh, SAFE program, please. And I need the first four to primary traffic uh, point secure from the next available unit. The SAFE plan can be used for a variety of emergencies, big or small. During a crisis, it puts everyone on the same page. People that are injured. Roadblocks, frantic parents, emergency vehicles. All of the planning is done ahead of time. So there's over 6,000 schools in RCMP jurisdiction. We're going, the goal is to have a safe plan in every one of these schools. So whether you're posted in British Columbia here in Surrey, uh, big city stuff, or whether you're going up uh, north to a school in Nunavut, you will have a uh, safe plan available to you. It's a big job educating all the Mounties in Canada about the safe plan. But it's happening. People like Kurt Newman and Simon Baldwin work tirelessly. To say Kurt is passionate about the SAFE program is an understatement. He has five kids in the public school system of BC. I want to make sure that the schools have a good plan. Any schools that my children attend, I want to make sure that they have the lockdown procedures in place, that they're doing everything that they're capable of doing to ensure that that school's safe. All right, this is our, uh... Between the database and their quick reaction to stop the shooter, the RCMP hopes to save time and lives. Back at the RCMP training site, trainees prepare for their last challenge. The goal is the same. Stop the active shooter without getting shot. But this time, with sensory overload. In a real life event, you've got the sprinklers going on, the fire alarm. You could have victims coming out the classrooms, victims lying on the ground, uh, booby traps, IEDs, a whole number of <laughs> a host of issues. So we're really trying to get to a higher level of sensory overload for the officers to really make it a little bit more of a challenge for them to identify what's going on. The noise makes it confusing. It's difficult to tell where the shots are coming from. <laughs> Through 
through all the confusion, they stop the threats and build their confidence. Go guys, quick, quick, quick. Go. It's a routine morning for any high school. The bell rings. Students linger in the hall. And administrators urge them to class. That will probably never change. But other things do. Okay, reach back. Ten years ago, there were only fire drills. But today, school administrators have a lot of other potential threats to deal with. Now, they have lockdowns. A lockdown procedure is a procedure that we uh, have in schools where if there is a threat of, um, that was going to be to the safety of students or staff, that we would go into a pr protocol that allows us to be able to clear the hallway, secure everybody, and uh, make sure that uh, students are in a safe, secure location until the, uh, the threat to the safety is, uh, has been eliminated. Hey, Les, Darren, Robin, can you guys meet me in my office, please? Yeah, on our way. Hey, so I um, just got a, a call from uh, Corporal Newman. The advice we've been given is that we should be going into lockdown. You guys got your stuff? Yeah. Let's go. Okay. We are going into a code red situation, so that means full lockdown. Staff Within seconds, the school seems deserted. In this scenario, the principals race to protect the students. Suddenly, it becomes pin drop quiet. Now, in now, you need to go in there. Until they secure the school, the student body is still at risk. In here. And so are they. Could you please go into that back area there, please? Oh, the wing is secure. A lockdown is designed to protect students from harm. If the students can't be seen, they're not easy targets. Okay, you guys, everybody's checked in, so we're just in monitor mode right now, then. Robin. Robin, how are you doing? Hi. No, I think it went well. So overall, I think we're good. So well done, guys. Put us on alert. Raj is proud of the school's up-to-date response training. As a principal and a father, he cares very much for the well-being of his students. I have a, a child myself that goes to an elementary school, and, uh, you know, the Code Red procedures that we follow here are consistent over there and you know I trust them and uh, I feel very comfortable and safe with that uh, if there was ever a threat to the safety of uh, students including my own son that uh, they would be uh, well looked after and that uh, there are procedures in place to uh, in, you know address the uh, safety issue. The frontline officers are prepared to use bullets if necessary but prevention is their ultimate goal. Our role is part of that community intervention to stop that kid from getting so to the point that they actually carry through on something like this. Some people say that a school shooting can't be prevented, that not much can be done to stop someone intent on committing such a rampage. But like a lot of officers, Sergeant Frank Policelli disagrees. Kids do not become school shooters overnight, but nor do they become suicidal overnight or join gangs overnight, or become addicted, addicted to drugs overnight. These are evolutionary processes. And with that comes the opportunity to intervene. If we recognize during that evolutionary process the indicators um, and the cries for help, if you will. The RCMP is now involved with a risk assessment process. When a student shows signs of troubled behavior, they take action. 
background or something. Bottom line is, if you are being victimized or, or, or feeling this way, feeling anxious or depressed, then get help. And if you have a friend who you observe is not behaving properly or has, has indicated to you that they are considering uh, destructive behavior, get them help. Police, guidance counselors, school administrators, they're now an active part of the solution. And it's working. Last year, Frank's team dealt with over 200 cases. One even led to the discovery of a loaded gun in a locker, the bullets ready. Just waiting for the owner to get mad enough. If we can recognize those indicators and then have a protocol in place to respond to them appropriately, we can intervene and stop them before they ever occur.